Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Rainer, this is my channel, it's called Rainier Books. And today I'm going to give you a book haul. <laughs> a book haul. Uh, I had said that I don't buy any more hardcover books unless I have read three of my books behind me on my shelves. Uh, and I actually cling to that promise, but I received two hardcover books last week that I had ordered weeks ago in the United Kingdom that came to Sweden, but I never got a notification that they were here, so they were sent back to the UK and they sent them again and last week finally I got them. And I also got a present from one of my friends, which I'm going to present you with three hardcover books, but I also have bought really a lot of electronic books for my Kindle. Um, books that I buy cost usually less than three American dollars and there have been quite a lot and so let's get started. The first book that I have uh, as an electronic book is Richard Fort Rock Springs short stories by the great American novelist and um, author Richard Ford. And um, in these 10 exquisite stories, Richard Ford mines literary gold from the wind scrubbled landscape of the American West and from the guarded hopes and gnawing loneliness of the people who live there. A refugee from justice, driving across Wyoming with his daughter and an unhappy girlfriend in a stolen cranberry colored Mercedes. A boy watching his family dissolve in a night of tragic comic violence and two men and a woman swapping hard luck stories in a frontier bar as they try to sweeten their luck. Rock Springs is a masterpiece of taut narration, cleanly chiseled prose and empathy so generous that it feels like a kind of grace. This is Richard Ford, Rock Springs. The uh, second book, I actually got it I think last Friday. This is Roxanne Gay, An Untamed State. Uh, the first novel by the great American uh, author and feminist and activist Roxane Gay, who's actually now uh, going to be the head of the jury for the National Book Award in 2020, which will announce their long list in September. Muriel Duval Jameson is living a fairy tale, the strong-willed youngest daughter of one of Haiti's richest sons. She lives in the United States with, ador with her adoring husband and infant son returning every summer to stay on her father's Port-au-Prince estate. But the fairy tale ends when Mireille is kidnapped in broad daylight by a gang of heavily armed men, just outside the estate walls. Held captive by a man who calls himself the Commander, Mireille waits for her father to pay her ransom. As her, her, the father's standoff with the kidnap as, as her father's standoff with the kidnapper stretches out into days, Mireille must endure the torments of a man who despises everything she represents. An Untamed State is a breathless, artful, disturbing and original story of a willful woman attempting to find her way back to the person she once was and of how redemption is found in the most unexpected of places. The third book is actually a novella that I bought. It's Canadian. Sheena Kamal in the grip of it. On a surveillance assignment for a child custody case, PT, PI in training, Nora Watts finds herself ensconced in a small fanning community on a beautiful hippie island in the Pacific Northwest. A place with a reputation for being welcoming to outsiders. But when she arrives there, she discovers her welcome quickly wears thin. Perhaps too quickly. Salt Spring Island, with a history as a refuge for African Americans, fleeing the bonds of slavery is not a place of refuge for her and she suspects may not be for the people who live there either. As she investigates, nothing about this remote community seems to add up. It gets personal as Nora confronts her own complicated feelings toward her estranged daughter and becomes increasingly concerned about the child she's been tasked to surveil. She discovers that small idyllic communities can hide very big secrets. That is, um, Sheena Kamal in the grip of it, a novel. Uh, it's so hot here today in Sweden, it's 29 degrees and inside of my house it's probably 
a little bit more. I live in an old house from the 1950s and the walls, you know, they collect all this heat and they give it inside of my room, <laughs> inside of my rooms. That's really, I have to get out, but first I have to finish this book haul. Um, the next book is Britt Bennett, The Mothers. It is the last season of high school life for Nadia Turner, a rebellious, grief-stricken, 17-year-old beauty. Mourning her own mother's recent suicide, she takes up with a local pastor's son, Luke Shepard. It's 21, a former football star whose injury has reduced him to waiting tables at a diner. They are young, it's not serious, but the pregnancy that results from this teen romance and the subsequent cover-up will have an impact that goes far beyond their youth. As Nadia hides her secret from everyone, including Aubrey, her God-fearing God best friend, the years move quickly. Soon, Nadia, Luke and Aubrey are full-fledged adults and still living in depth to the choices they made that one seaside summer maneuver. And one seaside summer. Caught in a love triangle, they must carefully maneuver and dogged by the constant nagging question, what if they had chosen differently? The possibilities of the road not taken are a relentless haunt. That's very often a theme in literature, isn't it? And I, I think it's always interesting because you can always look at, back at your own life and see the the paths, that, the roads that were there and which you took a certain road and not this road. What ha would happen if I would have taken that road? What would have happened if I w didn't went to Russia in 1992? More about that in a later video. Uh, the next book is Sherman Alaxi, Indian Killer. That's a thriller also from the Pacific Northwest. A serial murderer dubbed the Indian Killer has Seattle living in fear as he scalps his victims and adorns their bodies with owl, with owl feathers the city consumes itself in a nightmare frenzy of racial tension. Then a possible suspect emerges, John Smith, an Indian raised by whites. John is lost between cultures. He fights for a sense of belonging that may never be his, but has his alienation made him angry enough to kill? The New York Times best-selling author of You Don't Have to Say You Love Me and many other acclaimed works, Sherman Alexi traces John Smith's rage with scathing wit and masterly suspense, delivering both a scintillating thriller and a searing parable of race, identity, and violence. Sherman Alexi, Indian Killer. And I have one more book here. I've, this is J. Courtney Sullivan, Friends and Strangers. Elizabeth, an accomplished journalist and new mother, is struggling to adjust to life in a small town after nearly 20 years in New York City. Alone in the house with her infant son all day and awake with him much of the night, she feels uneasy, adrift. She neglects her work, losing untold hours to her Brooklyn mom's Facebook group, her influencer's sister's Instagram feed and text messages with a best friend she never sees anymore. Enter Sam, a senior of the local women's college whom Elizabeth hires to babysit. Sam is struggling to deckle between the path she's always planned on and a romantic entanglement that threatens her ambition. She is worried about student loan debt and what the future holds. In short order, they grow close. But then Sam finds an unlikely kindred spirit in Elizabeth's father-in-law. The true differences between the women's lives become starkly revealed and a betrayal has devastating consequences. A masterful exploration of motherhood, power dynamics, and privilege in its many forms, Friends and Strangers reveals how a single year can shape the course of a life. It's Liddy King, a Father of the Rain. I read uh, Writers and Lovers by Liddy King, her current title. Uh, Gardiner Amory's life is reeling, Nixon is being impeached, his wife is leaving him, and his worldview is rapidly becoming outdated. His daughter, Daly, has spent the first 11 years of her life negotiating her parents' conflicting worlds. The liberal, socially committed realm of her father and of her mother and the conservative, liquor-soaked life of her father. But when the pair divorces, Gardner's basest impulses are unleashed in a deluge. The chasm between all of, the, all, between all of them widens, and Daly is stretched thinly across it. As she reaches adulthood, Daly rejects the narrow world of her father's prejudices and embarks on her own life until Gardner hits rock bottom. Returning home to help her father get sober, Daly risks everything she's found beyond him, including a chance at love in an attempt to repair a trust that was broken long ago. 
In this winner of the New England Book Award for Fiction, Libby King pulls readers into a brilliant exploration of the attraction of martyrdom, the intoxication of playing savior, an absorbing, insightful story written in cool, polished prose right to the last conflicted line, said the Washington Post, when this book, Father of the Rain, was published. A couple of years ago, I have it as an ebook. And now to the three books that I got this week. This week. I, I um, wrote a very interesting article a couple of weeks or months ago, you, I don't know how time flies by in this pandemic, um, about black uh, British authors. And there were lots of 14, 15 really very interesting titles that were recommended. I bought a couple of them and I will uh, link that article down below if you're interested to see what else was on that list. One of the books that I received now this week after months on the way between the UK and Sweden and back is this book by Irinosen Okoji Nudie Branch. That is from a young author um, from of Nigerian British origin. Her debut uh, novel Butterfly Fish won a Betty Trask Award and now she published this book, A Nudie Branch, in 2020 with dialogue books in London, and this is a bunch of short stories, in 2019, by Dialogue Box in London. In this collection of short stories, offbeat characters are caught up in extraordinary situations that test the boundaries of reality. A love-hungry goddess of the sea arrives on an island inhabited by eunuchs. I, I know. I don't know. A girl from Martinique moonlights as a Grace Jones impersonator. Dimension-hopping monks sworn to silence must face a bloody reckoning, and a homeless man goes right back to the very beginning through a gap in time. Moody Branch is a dark and seductive foray into the surreal by, excuse me, Irinosen Okoji, Moody Branch. The second book that I received from England uh, in that same parcel was The Book of Echoes by Rosanna Akama. That is published in 2020, I'm sure. It was published in 2020 by Doubleday in London. Yes, it is. And, um, Rosanna Akama uh, was born to African and Caribbean parents, began writing uh, the book of Echoes 20 years ago to give voice to the Brixton community in which she grew up. Brixton is a very beautiful and vibrant part of London. Uh, the book of Echoes by um, Rosanna Akama is a story of spans over several centuries. Over 200 years ago in Africa, a woman tosses her young son to safety as she is hauled away by slavers. After a hundred, after a brutal sea passage, her second child, a newborn baby girl, is snatched away. Although the woman doesn't know it yet, her spirit is destined to roam the earth in search of her lost children. Her spine will make its way to 1980s Brixton, where she watches teenage Michael attempt to stay out of trouble as riots spit and boil on the streets and to a sun-baked village in Nigeria where Ngozi struggles to better her life. As the invisible threats that draw these two together are pulled over tighter, the Book of Echoes asks how can we overcome the traumas of the past when they are woven so inextricably with the present. Humming with humor, with horror and beauty, Rosanna Amaka's remarkable debut marks her as a vibrant new voice in fiction. This is Rosanna Akama. This is Rosanna Kama and the Book of Echoes. And the last book I got from my friend Katarina. She is uh, from Germany, but she lives in the Ukraine right now and works there. This is, um, a, thank you very much for this. I was really happy to get this. It's Deepa Anapara, Gin Patrol on the Purple Line. And I think many of you have heard about this book and I'm very curious to put this on my TBR, of course. Uh, this is a story about children in India. A nine-year-old Jay watches too many reality cop shows, thinks he's smarter than his friend Pari, even though she always gets top marks, and considers himself to be a better boss than Faiz, even though Faiz is the one with the job. When a boy at school goes missing, Jay decides to use the crime-solving skills he has picked up from episodes of Police Patrol to find him. With Pari and Faiz by his side, Jay ventures into some of the most dangerous parts of the sprawling Indian city, the bazaar at night and even the railway station at the end of the purple line. But kids continue to vanish and 
The trio must confront terrified parents and indifferent police force and soul-snatching jeans in order to uncover the truth. As the disappearance edge ever closer to home, the lives of Jay and his friends will never be the same again. This is Gin Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara. Thanks, Katarina. And uh, Katarina is on Bookstagram. I uh, put a link below down to her amazing uh, account that you should follow. This was the um, book haul. Thank you very much for watching this, and I hope that you heard of one or two books that might interest you. Maybe you have read one of them, maybe you have read three or four of them, maybe you have read all of them, and then you can tell me all about it in the comments below. I thank you very much for watching this video, um, and I see you very soon. Bye.